Are you planning on buying a house in North Carolina and you're wanting to bring your perhaps chickens, ducks, cows, horses, or maybe even a jackass? No, not that one, this one. Well, there's a couple things to keep in mind when you're looking at bringing any kind of livestock or poultry with you in the new home that you're potentially gonna purchase. So when you're looking at houses, keep in mind some homes have restrictions on what you can and cannot do at the property. Now, yeah, everybody knows about HOAs. They either love them or hate them. Most of the time people hate them, uh, but they do serve a purpose. But beyond HOAs, there are also other restrictions that are kind of hidden and a lot of people don't know about them. Kind of get a funny look when you start talking to them about it and they're like, what is that? These are deed restrictions. What are deed restrictions? It's restrictions that are attached to the deed. I know it's crazy, mind blowing. Pew. Now, inside of most of these restrictions is a section about livestock, uh, cattle, or poultry. Uh, basically, any kind of farm animal. Most of them do allow domestic animals, such as you know dogs and cats. But in this video, let's talk about some of the pros and cons and why they're put in place to begin with. So most of these restrictions were put in place by the developer or builder. Um, they're there so that as they're developing the neighborhood or the road or whatever, uh, maybe it's a couple houses at a time, maybe it's different sections at a time over many years, they want to maintain the value of the next property they're building without somebody that bought maybe the first house putting a donkey in the front yard or something crazy that would diminish the um, aesthetics of the neighborhood. Now, if you're one of the people that buy a house at the back of the neighborhood, not only does it help the builder out, but it also maintains your value. So when you go to sell your house that you don't have somebody that's, again, jacked up their house at the front of the property or front of the development and diminish the value of your home. Same goes for HOAs, except you pay for them. And again, that's exactly how I describe them to a lot of my clients is what's a deed restriction. It's an HOA that you don't have to pay for. They basically tell you what you can and cannot do at the property. Now, one thing about what they can and cannot do, a lot of times these deed restrictions uh, have an expiration date meaning maybe they plan on getting done with the development in less than 10 years. Maybe it expires on that 10th year and you can do whatever you want after that. So you could see this as good or bad if it's getting ready to expire and your neighbor next door can do whatever he wants. Um, that could also mean losing value in your own property if he decides to go wild. But again, with livestock, that's where I see most of the issues. Um, somebody wanting to have a mini farm or just a couple chickens in their backyard, it becomes an issue when that's not allowed. Even though you own the property, you can't do what you want on the property. Now, some other restrictions that are uh, I see commonly in these clauses or, or documents are uh, the outbuilding that you might want to put up um, on your property. It sometimes has to match the house. Sometimes it dictates what it can be made of, what the exterior can be made of, what the foundation can look like. Uh, another thing is fences. Does it have to be a vinyl fence? Can you have a wood fence? Does it have to be a metal fence? Can you even have a fence? We'll also see just because you can have dogs and cats and domesticated animals does not mean you can have 15 dogs or cats. Uh, a lot of times they'll have a restriction on the amount you can have. Now the reason for this is they don't want a dog breeder to come in there and have 15 dogs tied up in the backyard. Again, could diminish the value of your yard if someone's staring out at your backyard trying to enjoy their pool and there's dogs yapping next door. Now, the thing I tell a lot of my clients about HOAs or deed restrictions is they're, they're only strict as the people that are enforcing them, meaning you don't know how strict it's going to be until you move in sometimes, which I know sucks, but... Unfortunately, that's the way it is. You know, you get that one guy that's retired and all he does is police the neighborhood all day. Yeah, that's the kind of neighborhood a lot of people don't want to live in. But I see all the time where HOA or deed restrictions say you can't have this. And then you see the neighbor next door has that and no one said anything. Now, doesn't mean when you get whatever he has, someone isn't going to say anything to you. But they're only as strict as the people that's enforcing them. And to enforce them, their only countermeasure other than asking you to remove whatever it might be 
is to sue you. Is it worth suing someone over having a couple chickens in their backyard? To me, no, probably not. If you have 15 roosters that get up and crow at 5 a.m., yeah, you're probably going to be looking at a lawsuit. So many of my clients that want to have some kind of animal or basically do whatever they want on their property, uh, they generally just try to avoid these neighborhoods. A lot of times it makes the, the hunting for a house a little bit harder, a little longer, depending on the type of house they're looking for. Um, but they generally just try to steer clear of them. Listen, if you're moving to North Carolina or anywhere in the triad, I'd love to talk to you about what you're looking for and finding you the perfect property. Until then, take a look at a couple of these videos and I will see you in the next one of mine. Thanks.